Hello and welcome to That's Just Prime and today we're going to be taking a look at a very interesting knockoff that I found online. This is a Deformation Robot movie series Skyfire Optimus Prime. Very interesting figure. I love this toy. But before we check him out, if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to consider subscribing to the channel. It won't cost you anything, but it will help me and the channel out. If you'd like to further help out the channel, please share with your friends if you like what you see. Post this video on social media, have your friends come over, check out the channel, and if they like it, subscribe as well. Now that we're losing our community options and our notifications, the best way to keep up with the channel is to come back and check it out often. I upload one to two videos a week, sometimes more. Finally, if you want to help out the channel even more, I've placed a donate button up at the top banner. If you want to click on that, I certainly would appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for watching, and let's go check out this figure. Autobots, roll out! And here we have the Formation Robot movie series Skyfire Optimus Prime, and I love this toy. I can't really say when this figure was released because it is a knockoff. Um, so sometime after Dark of the Moon is what I'm going to say since the base figure is based on the ultimate Dark of the Moon figure. And I did find this guy online a couple of weeks ago. I found him on AliExpress. I paid $21 shipped for this figure. So for that price, I could not pass it up. Now, right off the bat, this is not one of those high quality KOs that I usually like to look at. Um, those are usually G1 figures. Uh, whenever I find something that's movie related, it's usually not a high quality KO. This is by no means a high quality figure this is a pretty cheap knockoff but i also enjoy checking these figures out and they usually tend to be a lot of fun this figure has been no exception so here we have the truck mode and again the the, the truck is based on the the dark of the moon ultimate we're going to be taking a look at that in a moment but he's obviously not included with that big trailer that turns into the armor he's got a different set of armor for him and this is obviously based on the jet fire figure or armor that we saw in the second movie in Revenge of the Fallen. So here in this, I'm going to call this a combined mode or armored up mode. Optimus is approximately 11 inches long from the nose of the cab all the way to the back here. Uh, and he's about five and a half inches tall. And as you can see, he's just absolutely massive. And I love the way this looks. I really did enjoy that ultimate uh, the DLTM figure, uh, so this has been no exception. I I really enjoy what this figure does. He rolls just fine, uh, and that's really kind of about it as far as the armor goes. Uh, we're going to want to get this armor uh, removed so that we can transform it, transform the figure, and get them prepared for a uh, combination. So to do that, simply, uh, you're not going to believe this. It's all on one peg. Before I do that, I forgot there is one more piece included. This is going to be kind of like an armor, like a chest piece or a hip piece uh, that's going to be included with a super robot mode. This is die cast. This is hard. This piece is metal. Unfortunately, there's nowhere to put this on here, at least that I can tell. In fact, here are the included instructions for this figure. And they're pretty much useless. It looks like a kid got a hold of them uh, before they were shipped to me. <laughs> and the the figure or the uh, uh, the instructions are rather useless. So we have an eight step transformation from robot to this came packed in truck mode, by the way. But the instructions go from robot to truck mode in eight steps. Which, if you're familiar with the Dark of the Moon figure, you know that it takes quite a bit more steps than eight. Then. It's got instructions for some Bumblebee figure, and then on the back, more Bumblebee. Nothing that uh, talks about this armor or how to put it on or anything like that. So again, the, the instructions are pretty useless. Uh, look at pictures and figure it out for yourself is kind of the, the, <laughs> the theme of this figure. So again, uh, I've looked everywhere. I have not been able to find where this, this piece can go in truck mode, but that's fine because uh, I'm not going to display them in truck mode. So now to get this removed, you're simply just going to pull up on it. It is on the hitch and you're probably going to do exactly what I just did, which was uh, separate the figure or start untransforming the figure. So we'll just get everything clipped back into place real quick. Set him to the side. And uh, that's it. The whole thing just comes off like that. Uh, you can peg it from this uh, port down here to this peg here. So you've got this extra piece here that you can use. And this is pegged into the normal 
a fifth wheel for the truck. So you can use the trailer for Dark of the Moon with this one if you have an extra trailer laying around. And then you can leave this piece uh, either or. I just leave it on here because um, it really doesn't get in the way of the robot mode or the combined mode. Um, and since this is what I'm using for the combination, I just leave it there, no problem. Real quick, let's take a look at the armor itself. So right here at the top, we're going to separate this. This is probably the scariest piece out of the whole set for me. This is the handgun. And actually, let's let's remove these real quick so I can get some better leverage. So we're going to take these cannons here and unpack these and set these off to the side. And then I like to get right in here at the base and pull up on this. And this piece is scary. So again, this is um, kind of thin plastic. So you're going to want to be very careful because it is scary. So what I just did off camera was pull this handle off of that port there. I don't like doing that. I learned that on the very first time that I transformed this. I only, I'm only doing it for the video. I'm probably never going to do that again because as you can see, that handle is, is quite long and thin. And again, this plastic seems kind of thin and, and cheap. It's not the best plastic. So I'm really scared that I'm going to twist it the wrong way and I'm going to break this peg off. I don't want to do that. But anyway, that port right there in the middle, that's where the gun was. We'll set that off to the side. Coming to the back here. And as you can see, these are already started coming off. So you can pop these off. These are going to be the leg pieces. And these are on, they're not round. They're kind of a shaped uh, peg there that are going to go into that shaped port right there. So you take these off. And then you open this, and then you set this to the back there. Open this, set this to the back, and you can see that's where the bottom of the feet are going to peg. So those are ready for combination. We'll set those off to the side. Finally, we'll take this piece here. We'll take the wings, open them up all the way. Open these up all the way to the top there. And then you can take the back pieces here and just angle them down a little bit. And this is going to be the Jetfire backpack right there. Bring the camera up some, because uh, this does get quite big. So there it is. So there is all the Jetfire armor, and that's pretty much all set and done and ready for combination. So let's take a look at the truck real quick, and I guess we'll bring the camera back down again. So the truck here by itself without the armor is about nine inches long and about three inches tall. And this is straight up just a knockoff of the Dark of the Moon uh, base truck or figure. So we'll bring that one in. So you can see these guys together. Um, this one is just a hair shorter than this one here. But other than that, they're pretty much the same identical figure. Uh, obviously, uh, there's going to be joints missing on this one. Uh, some transformation steps are, have been omitted. Uh, again, the plastic is thinner. It's not going to hold as well. So this is not, nowhere near as, as nice as this one here is. Um, but it, it serves its purpose just fine as far as co the combination mode. These two figures standing by side by side look pretty cool together. So real quick to check this guy out. He does roll just fine. Um, as you can see, it's fairly obvious that the paint is kind of crap. Uh, <laughs> so I considered giving this my own custom paint job. I'm probably still going to do that. Uh, but I wanted to show you the figure first the way that I got it. And then I'll, I'll customize it later. But uh, obviously the smokestacks are red. They're not painted. The wheels are not painted. Um, you know, we've got some paint scratches and stuff like that. And although that's very possibly from just combining it, I may have already scratched some paint off. I'm not really sure. Um, the roof is kind of two-tone where the roof should be blue. Obviously the blues are different. The, the blue is much lighter on the knockoff than it is on the original figure. It doesn't have that sheen. Uh, but the, the roof is two-toned and then the window obviously needs some you know it's lacking detail the mirrors are lacking detail so it's just, it's just detail that's lacking uh the doors you know obviously uh you know so not not terrible uh they got fairly close to the mark but not all the way there so let's get this guy transformed and we'll definitely bring the camera up because it's obviously going to get tall so again transformation for this figure if you are familiar with the dark of the moon figure this is going to be pretty familiar to you um there's some stuff that's missing we'll get into that so we'll uh unpeg the back fenders here we'll just unpeg those take the sides of the cab and bring these guys all the way up and then we're going to fold these down and over and that tab is going to go into that slot right there now here's difference number one there is no swivel on this these do not swivel and sit on his back these just sit on the side here and that's just as well because um you need these ports here for the armor so you can't you really don't want these typically you can see the little slot right there where the original fenders would have tabbed in but you you wouldn't be even be able to tap them in there anyway uh not, not for the combined mode with this set of armor here again we're going to take the bottom of the feet are pegged into the back of the cab there so we just unpeg those 
and bring the legs back. Now on the original figure, there are some tabs and some slots here and here. This is obviously uh, missing all of that. And as you can see, the plastic is a little more hollow on this one. The head's already popped up on me. So the, the whole roof part here, this is going to slide up and you can see the head coming up. And then this is going to come down. Before we do that, we're going to take these doors. Bring the camera up some more. Take the doors here, open these up. Separate the front of the cab to form the arms. Bring these up here on this joint and bring those down. Just like that. Get this out of the way. Move this forward all the way like that. And then this whole thing is going to come down and form the rest of the body. Here's difference number two and probably the worst one of these. On the original figure, you've got two tabs here that are going to peg into these two slots here to hold the whole figure together. This doesn't do that. So when this comes down like this, this is basically being held by friction from this tab and that hole right there. That's about it. There's not a whole lot holding this figure together at the midsection. So that kind of sucks. Uh, bring the arms down. Straighten out the backpack. Obviously, the head has already come up on its spring joint. Now, uh, two more differences. So on the original figure, we had a hinge here so that we can fold these doors down. This one doesn't have that either. So those things are just going to sit straight out like that. <laughs> and then finally, for the uh, hands here, there was a joint here at the bottom of the grill. So the grill would fold down and sit flat against the bumper. This one doesn't do that. This just has that one hinge right down there. <laughs> So this just opens like that, and it stays like that, which is pretty bad. Uh, and then we can slide the fists out all the way like that. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. The, the regular robot mode on this figure is pretty bad. Let's get them all straightened out and ready for your close-up, Mr. Optimus. Let's get you standing there and get you centered in. So here in robot mode, Optimus stands approximately eight inches tall at the top of the head. Nine, if you want to go to this uh, thing up here. I guess that's one more thing I forgot to mention is that on the original figure, that would have folded down as well. In fact, let's just bring in the original figure so you can see these guys together. Uh, they're pretty comparable. It's just missing some details. Again, the plastic is a little hollow. It's cheaper made uh, and, and, all, and all that stuff. So the, the, the really my biggest problem is the tabs missing for this this being as loose as it is that's really kind of my biggest problem will not be an issue when we're in combined mode but here for robot mode for the regular robot mode it, it, it's kind of crap um but again i didn't get this figure for the regular robot mode <laughs> so there it is that's what these two guys look like standing together not a terrible job of approximating optimus prime i suppose but you can see these fold down this folds down um these fold onto his back where these don't you know so you got little minor differences like that uh that's expected from a cheap knockoff so we'll set that guy aside and again and let's let's check out the details again the head not terrible i guess we'll bring this one back in so you can see the heads together uh it's obviously a knockoff but it's not a terrible uh depiction of prime um well so the articulation you can turn the head side to side uh, the shoulders can go in and out, forward and backward, all the way around. They can bend at the elbow, and they uh, actually got a ball joint and a swivel at the elbow there. And the fists, no, the fists don't do anything. The um, waist doesn't do anything. Legs, forward, backwards, in and out. No rotation. He does have a bend at the knee, and he does have a tilt at the ankles. And that's going to be about it. Uh, yeah, not, not a whole lot to say here. Um, he is a very obvious knockoff of Dark of the Moon base figure for Optimus Prime. And uh, not a high quality one at that. <laughs> so now let's get into the main event. And I hope I can fit this in here all the way because this thing is going to be huge. So we're going to start off with the two leg pieces that we brought here and here. And these are simply going to tab in. As you saw, there's a peg there. There's a port at the bottom of the foot. So you just peg these guys together. Uh, these are kind of tight. A lot of these pegs are very tight. So once that's there, fold this over, bring this up. That's about it. Same thing on this side. We'll peg this guy in right there. Get him all the way in there. Fold this over, bring this up. And there we go. Now he's uh, up a little higher. <laughs> I really don't know how I'm going to go about fitting this whole thing in here. I really don't. And go bring him back here. And bring it all the way back. Let's hope that works. Okay, so now on the figure itself, uh, we're going to bring these down just a tad. Make sure everything is straight. 
bring them around the back. So again, these two uh, peg holes in the back here are gonna be for these two pegs here and here. And you just kinda gotta work your way around that. And once again, um, you know, if, if you follow my channel, you know that I am not against buying KOs, high quality or cheaps, I don't care. I just like checking out different Optimus Prime figures. So, you know, whenever I see an Optimus Prime, if it's interesting to me, I'm gonna pick it up. <laughs> okay, so now the idea here is that there are two peg holes or semi peg holes here and here. These are supposed to fit over the smokestacks. They really don't. <laughs> You just bring this down and just kind of let it sit there. And then I like to bring these up and just kind of hide them in there. Uh, bring his shoulders up. Okay. Uh, that's going to be about it for that. He is going to get a little back heavy, so I may have to adjust a lot here. Real quick, uh, the die cast piece here. So there's two pegs here. Those are going to plug in there and there. And this uh, holds in pretty tightly. This holds in pretty good. So once that's there, it's really... I'm not worried about falling off or going anywhere, really. The cannons that were the first two pieces that we separated, these are going to peg into the side of the arms there. So we'll peg one in there, and we'll peg one in right here. And we're almost there. And then finally, we're going to get the gun, and that's just going to simply peg into his arm. So now we're going to get him all straightened out and backed up. Hopefully, try to get this whole thing in Camera. And I think that's about as much as I'm going to be able to show you. Unfortunately, <laughs> I can't back up any further. And this figure is absolutely huge and massive. And I love the way this looks. Here in combined mode, Optimus is approximately 11 inches tall at the top of the head. 14 if you want to go all the way up here. This guy is absolutely massive. Um, now, pretty light considering he's so big. He's kind of light. Um, articulation kind of stays the same for the most part. Um, you know, you just kind of got to work your way around the armor. But uh, other than that, the articulation really does not get affected. Other than the, the tilt that we had at the ankles, that kind of goes away. But you can still give him some pretty good standing poses here. And we'll uh, yeah, adjust those fins there. He looks pretty cool going all the way around. Uh, not a whole lot of kibble sticking out. He is a quite thin for the size of the figure going all the way around. So you can see what the armor looks like in the back. The leg armor there, yeah, holds pretty well. Looks really good. I love the way this looks. And this is what I get these figures for. That is a fantastic display piece that looks really nice next to this one. Now, this is really not going to fit. I'm going to have to back this up a lot. Check that out. That just looks so cool. This looks so nice up on my shelf with these two figures look together like this. Now, the question that I've been getting the most since I started posting pictures of this guy online is, will this armor fit on the original DLTM figure? And the answer is sort of, kind of, but not really. Um, so the, the backpack fits on him just fine. In fact, I think it fits on him a little better than it did on the knockoff because these pieces clip on to, well, not really clip on, but they fit over the smokestacks a lot better than they did on the knockoff figure. Now I've got mine up against the wall, uh, because my hips on my figure are, have, have come loose over time. So if I step him forward, uh, well, A, we won't be able to see him in the camera, but if I step him forward, he's just going to bend backwards at the hips and fall over. Um, again, not a fault of the armor. That's just my figure, uh, with the loops, the hips coming loose over time. Uh, I'll just have to get in there and tighten them up. But the backpack fits on real nice. The arm cannons fit in real nice. The weapon, he holds it really nice. In fact, I think he holds the weapon better than the knockoff figure held the weapon. But that's going to be about it. The hip piece here, this die cast piece, does not clip on at all. There's no way of putting this on. I have this on with one of those clear rubber bands that figures come wrapped in. Uh, I always save those uh, for just things exactly like this. So there's no way to put this on unless you tie it on or somehow modify it to stay on there, uh, which is kind of what I've done right now. And then for the leg pieces, the leg pieces don't really hold. They're being held by the clips here. If, if I move these clips forward, that is just going to fall. You see the hole in the bottom of the foot and that peg don't really fit at all. So if, if you try to put that on there, it's just going to fall, as you can see. So that doesn't really hold. Again, you can modify it. You can thicken it up. Maybe put some uh, clear nail polish or super glue on there 
to thicken up the joint so that he will hold it. So it can be possible to have this armor put on the figure. Uh, you will have to do a little bit of modification and then you can change out your logos here and you'd have yourself a really cool additional armor or display piece for yourself. And here we have one last look at the figure. So there you go. Like I said, I picked this guy up a couple of weeks ago on AliExpress for about $21. I think that was worth it for me. Again, because I'm just an, a prime collector, whether it be a real or a knockoff, uh, high quality or cheap, I don't care. Just interesting Optimus Prime figure is something that I am always after to go up on my shelf. So for me, this was worth it. Now, I will say that since the weeks that I've purchased this figure, it has gone up in price. It's just over $30 now. I don't know if I can say it's worth it for that much. For $21, it was worth it to me. I don't know if it's worth $30. Um, again, the, the base figure, let's be honest, it is kind of crap. Uh, the armor is pretty cool, though, and if you want to modify it to fit it on the original figure, that, that really gives you a very cool base armor that you can modify and work with so that's pretty cool but again consider the price if that is worth it to you or not so that about does it for the deformation robot movie series skyfire optimus prime let me know what you think of this figure give me a thumbs up subscribe and share with your friends if you like what you see as always thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you next time on that's just prime